declared that Israel's problems are our problems, that we are responsible to fix these problems, and we can fix these problems because we are all now players in the story of the Jewish people. History is full of great revolutions, and although many of these revolutions have succeeded in impacting the future course of world history, all of them pale in comparison to the Zionist revolution. Only the Zionist revolution aspires to ingather a scattered nation from the four corners of the earth, to revive a dead language to everyday use, to liberate a homeland from under a mighty world empire, and to create a moral society that will set an example to the whole of mankind. It is a great honor for me to introduce to you member of Knesset, Professor Ariel Dodd. For 2,000 years we were in the diaspora. No state, no military organization, nothing to defend and protect us. We were dust. We were worthless. Everyone could do whatever he wanted to do with us. If the Tsar wanted to arrange a problem, arrange the problem. If the Spanish king wanted to kick us out of Spain, we were exiled. If the Nazis wanted to, to exterminate six million, they did it. No state, <coughs> no military. But in this very poor existence, from Siberia to Ethiopia, all Jews in the world preserved a very simple truth. They knew that somewhere far away, the land of Israel is waiting for them because they knew that the land of Israel belongs <coughs> to the people of Israel. The very very simple truth that we preserved for 2,000 years in the worst condition, half of the people here lost under the best condition to preserve it. Half of the people who walks in the land of Israel are not sure anymore that the land of Israel belongs to the people of Israel. They think maybe it's also the Arabs. There's an Arab narrative. There are we came back to the land of Israel, but unfortunately the land was not empty, and there is another nation here. How did we manage to lose this horse, our truth, along the history, when we had the best condition to preserve? But the situation <coughs> is that we face an Israeli society, and worst of all, Israeli leadership, who are not so sure anymore in this situation. <coughs> and they think that maybe we should establish a Palestinian state in the heartland of Israel to, 
to uh, uh, cater for their national ambitions. We can stop terror. And that's much better than to go down again and again and again to the operating theater, patching people that uh, were burned in, in a bus, putting skin grafts over patients. But in order to prevent terror in Israel, there's one important step we must take. Prevent the creation of a Palestinian state in the heart of Israel. As long as they have as long as they really expect to be able to create their own state in our homeland, here in the land of Israel. They know they will be able to eliminate us. They know that they will be able to use it exactly as the Arabs in Gaza Street are using the piece of land that in our stupidity or corruption will we'll get to it. We get it. I want to remind you that the worst disasters in Israel started when the Likud was too strong. Once. Begin and show off. When they could have 40 seats, they felt strong enough to give the land of Israel to the Arabs. Begin in Sinai, Sharon in Gaza and North Samaria. Netanyahu and Hebron. Abu Mazen will not survive in Judea and Samaria. More than three days, if Hamas will decide to take over, if we, God forbid, will leave the area. If the IDF will not be there, Abu Mazen will not be there, Hamas will take over, and Hamas will be in these Arab neighborhoods in Jerusalem. <coughs> this is the political map of Israel. These are the threats. Ichud Lumi is an old, but in a way, it's a new party. I, I am a member of Ichud Lumi for the last six years in the Knesset. I was a member of a, a party called Moledet, that the Chavam Zevi, Gandhi, established. And I went to Moledet because Moledet was not sectorial, neither religious nor secular. There were religious and non-religious and newcomers from Russia and, and people who were born in Israel. And Gandhi, who didn't wear kippah on his head, wrote on his membership card, the land of Israel for the people of Israel by the Torah of Israel. That was Gandhi, who wasn't religious. And it's an anomaly because only in Israel, when someone starts speaking about the land of Israel, when I speak, the, when I talk and say, the land of Israel belongs to the people of Israel by the Torah, I see this, look, you, you know this type of look that people are trying to see whether I work it up. <laughs> Maybe in some way. They can't see. People who speak about Eretz Israel are only teachers of geography and religious. How come? How come that Americans can be patriots and nobody asks whether they are religious or not? An Italian, who asks if, if someone will protect Italy or, or a Russian that will, will, is ready to go for a war against Japan because of the Kyrillian island, nobody will ask whether he is a, a religious Orthodox Pravoslav or whatever. Only here. We expect you to be religious if you want your home mm -hmm. and you don't think that any square millimeter of it belongs to the Arabs. That's the whole